You know, I planned this video for a nice sunny day. And we had sunny days. And then this happened. It's cold, it's raining, it's snowing, it is... Oh. Hey folks, I'm Photo Joseph, and this company, China B-Way Optical, asked me to tell you about their new magnetic photography filters. Now, China B-Way Optical Company has been around for over a decade. They're a Chinese camera filter brand who were the first to develop and market the magnetic filter mounts in China. They manufacture their filters in their own factory, and they actually hold a patent since 2017 for their magnetic filter design. Their new magnetic pro lens filter kit is available in a variety of combinations, but the filter set that I'm working with today includes the magnetic filter mount and a variety of step-up rings, a circular polarizer or CPL filter, a neutral density ND64, also known as an ND1.8 filter, an ND1000, AKA an ND3.0 filter, and a graduated ND filter or a GND. This one is an ND8 or ND0.9 GND. Now, ND numbers can be a little confusing, but if you visit the Wikipedia page on neutral density filters, which I've linked to just below the like button, you'll see a handy chart on there. The ND 1.8 filter, which is an optical density of 1.8, is also known as an ND 64. Now, ND 64 means that 1 64th of the light is transmitted through the filter, which is a six stop reduction. There's an easy way to figure this out. First, remember that every stop of light up or down is doubling or halving the amount of light. So a one stop reduction would be half the light. One half or one over two is an ND two. Cut that in half again for one more stop reduction and that's an ND four. So one fourth of the original light. Now let's just keep doubling, doubling that to ND eight, ND 16, ND 32, ND 64. And that's the first ND filter, a six stop reduction. The second one is an ND 1000, which is a 10 stop reduction. The math is actually one 1024th but 124, 1024 is often rounded to 1000 because, you know, marketing. But that ND1000 is 0.1% light transmission, meaning that your exposure can be 1000 times longer than normal with this filter in place. So how do you easily do that math to find the right exposure? There's a variety of charts and calculators out there, but I will warn you of this. As you get into the higher ND levels, like when using this ND1000 filter, you'll find different calculations varying by a second or so in either direction, which doesn't seem to make much sense because math is not exactly subjective, but it's more a compensation for variances in filters among different manufacturers. So while it's easy enough to manufacture an accurate one stop reduction, it's a lot harder to manufacture an accurate 10 stop reduction and not have it say be like nine and a half stops. So most calculators take this into consideration, assuming it's gonna be a little bit less. So for example, most calculators will show a 1 60th of a second base exposure calculates to a 15 or 16 second exposure, even though the math of 1 60th times 1000 is 16.7 seconds. Or if you actually use the technically accurate 1024 number, you get a flat 17 seconds. Anyway, much of it's moot because the difference between a 15 and 16 second exposure is hardly noticeable. But more importantly, in an exposure that long, your lighting may change, right? Clouds could pass over the sun, or if it's near sunrise or sunset, the sky might get noticeably brighter or darker during that time. So when you're talking about exposures this long, your calculation should really just be considered a starting point. Anyway, back to calculating that starting point. There's a handy app I found on the iOS app store called ND Exposure, which I'll link to below, that makes doing the math really easy. But as an example, if a scene would normally be 1 60th of a second exposure with an ND1000 filter, that'd be a 15 second exposure, starting point, give or take, according to this calculator. By the way, that other included filter, the graduated neutral density, the GND or GND8 filter is a three stop reduction, meaning that your top of the shot is three stops darker than the bottom of the shot, unless you flip the filter upside down. We'll have a look at how these all work practically in just a moment, but first let me show you what this kit looks like. The B-Way kit comes with a protective carrying case with an easy to attach belt clip. The included step rings allow you to use the same filter set on a variety of lens sizes, and the filter holder securely snaps onto the step ring. Then the filter is magnetically attached to the holder and can even be stacked. The magnetic design makes it quick to replace or remove filters, which can be especially important when using a very strong ND, like the ND1000, which you will need to remove to compose your shot and focus the camera. Then, since it's magnetic, it instantly reattaches without worrying about unintentionally rotating the lens and potentially changing focus or zoom. The filters can be stacked to combine their effects, for example, combining the polarizer with the ND1000 and even with the graduated ND filter. 
This is version two of B-Way's magnetic filter system. Compared to the original design, the new system is larger, so it won't vignette all the way down to a 16 millimeter full frame lens, or eight millimeter on micro four thirds, even when stacking multiple filters. The graduated ND filter can be adjusted slightly up and down, and the new metal locking design ensures that the filter holder is locked in place on your lens. And in many cases, your original lens cap can be used as well, even when the filter adapter is in place. I've put links to both the original and the updated filter kits in the description below. The graduated ND filter is something I personally haven't worked with in years. I think I'd become so accustomed to being able to draw a linear exposure gradient in apps like Lightroom that I kind of forgot that this can be done optically. And I gotta say for landscapes, this is a really great tool for getting much better results straight out of camera before you even start editing. I took a road trip to the Oregon coast to give these filters a try. And here's some examples. Here's a shot with no filters at all. The sky is obviously brighter than the ground and so we'll need some more composed. But here's the same photo with the graduated ND filter. Notice how much more balanced the photo is. These are straight out of camera. Here's another example. First, no filter, then with the GND. Again, you can see how much more balanced the exposure is. Then I added one of the ND filters, allowing me to have a long exposure blurring the water. These were shot very early in the morning, just as the sun was starting to lighten the sky, so it was still pretty dark out. But now let's look at something shot in the brightest part of the day. Again, original, GND, and ND on top. It's pretty cool to shoot an eight second exposure at 2.30 in the afternoon. And finally, here's a few more pretty pictures with various combinations of filters in play. As you've seen here, one of the coolest and most obvious uses of a really strong ND filter is to blur moving water, even in full daylight. But they can be used anywhere where you want a longer exposure than the existing lighting would normally allow. It's a great addition to any serious photographer's toolkit. A high quality magnetic set like these, especially with the graduated neutral density, which I rediscovered to be a lot of fun to play with, is another great tool. Thanks for watching, and thanks again to B-Way China Optical for sponsoring this video.